Thornton May is one of the finest, most category-defying futurists in the world and a thought leader for technology professionals in every industry. Thornton is a friend and mentor whose ideas and encouragement have helped Redbird and others pay attention and think hard about the real issues that challenge our industry. And they tell me, he is at times, quite amusing. It is my pleasure to introduce to you now, Mr. Thornton May. Thank you, Trace. Thank you, Trace. All right, that was, that's amazing. I, I have been uh, introduced a whole lot of times. I mean, a whole, I've been introduced by presidents, by prime ministers, by priests, no pope yet, all right, basically, ministers of finance, Oscar nominees, Nobel laureates, even luminaries like Roger Sharp and Jerry Gregoire. And in a unique uh, opportunity, I was uh, actually, uh, I was introduced by a, an ambassador to the United Nations wearing a uh, Roman gladiatorial costume, basically, but, uh, but never by an avatar. So thank you, thank you, that's, uh, that's off my bucket list. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Well, good morning, everyone. All right, good, good. This is very, very interactive. I'm Thornton May. I am delighted to be here. Thank you for asking me back. It's a great thing. I have two tasks this morning, two very simple tasks, if you will. Task number one is delightfully easy, and that is to introduce Don Marinelli, all right? And uh, the most difficult thing about introducing Don Marinelli is how to keep the introduction within an hour because he is a renaissance man, there is a multifaceted dude, all right? So, so Don is many things. He is a futurist, he is a visionary, he is an entrepreneur, he is a thespian, all right, you know, and he is a, a historical reenactor, all right? So, so he does that, but, but also, but, but Don basically is to oratory what paratroopers are to the aviation industry, if you will. He's fearless, He's willing to explore, he's never satisfied with the status quo, and he's filled with faith that the chute will actually open. All right, so, so, so that's Don. And so, but, but Don is first, last, and always basically a teacher. First, last, and always a teacher, an instructor. So he is in his space with you, ladies and gentlemen. And so like Don is going to, to share his thoughts regarding teachers, how teachers come to grips with basically disruptive technologies and a generation of learners who are possessed, let us say nay, let we say defined by, if you will, uh, 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 disruptive technologies. So that's task number one, all right? That's task number one. My second task, a little different. My second task is to briefly share with you a futurist perspective on disruptive technologies and their impacts, all right? So, and the reason I'm having this brief discussion with you is like last session, leaving the session last year, I couldn't help but noticing, I sat in on the R&D session, I couldn't help noticing that your industry basically had a whole lot of disruptive technology coming your way, all right? And I said, well, wait, well, wait, we should probably get our heads into that. So, being a researcher, and, and well, actually, it's, it's in my sweet spot, because studying the impacts of disruptive technology is what we futurists do. We actually have institutional programs going on at these, at these organizations, if you will. But I put together a research project, basically for, for, for this for this particular event, if you will, basically studying how enterprise collapse due to inappropriate response to disruptive technology, enterprise uh, basically collapse due to inappropriate response to disruptive technology. I also tried to personalize this. I also studied the human aspect of this. I examined the personal career impacts related to this inappropriate response to disruptive technology. So I did that. And then finally, because, you know, basically we researchers, this is what we do, I studied the people who study, if you will, enterprise collapse due to inappropriate response to disruptive technology. So that's what I did. So that was the previous, that's what the data cut. It turns out disruptive technology is a wicked hot technology and totally unrehearsed, totally unrehearsed, we're reading the same book. So there are lots of books, there are lots, lots of type of stuff going on here and everybody you talk to is talking about disruption. So basically, here is, I don't know if you know this guy, John Doerr, he is the Uber and the Alpha venture capitalist. We hang out together in Silicon Valley. And he says, Thornton, this is received wisdom. Like Don will tell you, never listen to receive. This is the one piece of received wisdom that you can actually believe, if you will, is that every vertical market is being disrupted. Every vertical market is being disrupted. 
And basically, and then we looked at every function, every, every role in the enterprise, everything, including, including, shall I say, aviation instructors, basically, you know, basically, is like, is, is being disrupted. This is Bill Slough. He's a close personal friend. He was going to be one of our speakers, but his damn team won. So, so he's, in, he's, he's basically, he, he's basically, uh, he's busy these days, type of thing. But if, if people say, well, Thornton, is disruption really really happening? I said, even USC, and it hurts me because I'm a former faculty member at UCLA, even USC, they don't just have a course on disruption, ladies and gentlemen, they have a degree in disruption. They have a degree in disruption, so it is a topic. Now, you've gotten, you've gotten real quiet, and so in, in 37 years of teaching, I know when you get quiet, it's time to either give you a test or give you an assignment. So here is the assignment. Ladies and gentlemen, basically in your small groups, I'm going to ask you to interface with other carbon-based life forms. In your small groups, 90 seconds please, please discuss and come up with a short list of companies who have been disrupted by technology. Yes, work among yourselves. Go, go, go. We know where the troublemakers are, so I'm going to come to these guys back here, I said, and, and please, what did your group come up with? And please introduce yourself here at Migration 4. There are no strangers. Gary Kotschott. Uh, there are tremendous technology companies that have been disrupted by technology. Yes, they are. And did you have yeah. some examples? Oh, uh, could be Dell, could be IBM just announced, uh, you know. Into the tank, into, into the, the tank. tank. <laughs> all right, round of applause for our first person here. Very good, very good. All right, all right, very good. How about this group? What did you guys come up with, sir? Or ma'am? Mom and pop stores. Mom and pop, gone, gone, very good. Great. Round of applause, nicely done. All right. All right, all right, all right, and all right. Introduce yourself and. Nida Catton, um, newspapers. Newspapers, all right, they're gone. Well, no, no, yeah, they're gone. They are, the media's here though, right? So we gotta be nice, the media's here. And I'm gonna come to the front row. The front, it's good to see people sitting in the front row of their life. What did you guys come up with? We came up with oh, you must be a senior executive. Look, he's looking around. He's looking around. He's like, he calls the committee. He calls the committee. Yeah, the uh, like Lockheed Martin. Stuff. Lockheed Martin. Very good. All right, round of applause. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So, so actually, you did a really good job. I, I, so, like, if you did, we did the report backs. Did you see any patterns? This is what us professors do. You know, that we ask for patterns. Did you see any patterns in your responses? Technology was that, and it was everywhere. It was media, it was mom and pop, it was retail, it was even the computer companies who are supposed to be good at this type of stuff, you know, they were getting disrupted, right? You know, but it's, it's interesting, but you didn't, you didn't really choose, I, we actually did this research, we went out to 2000, to the global 2000, you know, but the big one was Kodak. You know, Kodak was, you know, Kodak, Blockbuster type, of, they were actually a verb, you know, that Kodak moment is now lo no longer a good thing type of stuff, you know, but here, here's some lessons, all right, I, have very, I don't have much time, but disruption lesson number one is disruptive technologies didn't sneak up on anybody, I'm just not like, oh my god, there are these things called computers, you know, I mean, I know, I mean, oh my god, there's this thing called interact, you know, basically, you know, experiential training, no, they knew about this type of stuff, so what's going on is, so now I'm going to ask you an art, it's, it's now become an art history lecture, so look at this picture, and does anybody recognize this painting? I got the cerebral flat line there, right? You know, all right, let me give you a hint. All right, does anybody know who painted this painting? All right, all right give you a hint. It was a, a complicated Dutchman who, who sort of had a trouble with his hearing. Very good, very good. All right, so, 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 so uh, you, if, can you read this? Because if you can read the title of this painting, you can, we could use you as a spy satellite, all right, you know? All right, the title of this painting is Vincent van Gogh, The Outskirts of Paris. The outskirts of Paris, that's the title of the painting. So what is the most significant visual element in this painting? Light pole, very, very good, you're very, very good. I, Don and I, we were looking at this painting and we said, oh, it's a bird, it's a bird, right? No, it's, it's not the bird, it is not the bird, it is the light pole. And so this is an artist, this is a wackadoo artist who basically had issues, right? But he said, wow, there's the outskirts of Paris and the technology that you could see what it you could see it coming. Even Van Gogh knew that the technology was going to have this impact type of stuff. So I just wanted to make that point, type of thing. All right, so so the technology future is forecastable. We know what's coming. We know what's coming. All right, type of thing. And so here what we have is here is that we kind of sort of know where technology is heading. All right, so we know that, but where we get, start getting confused is, what are we supposed to do about it? What are we supposed to do about it? Kodak knew. Digital photography was not a surprise to Kodak. They invented it. 
They invented it. A wonderful guy named Steve Sasson, basically an engineer, he invented it, and he took it to senior management, and you know what they said? They said, cute, don't tell anybody about it. Honest to God truth, honest to God truth, unbelievable, right? They were aware, but they were in denial. They actually did market research. They basically had unambiguous, six, six, basically decimal point precision that says, we are screwed. And they did not, that's an official strategic term, by the way. I mean, you know, type of stuff, you know? And the, but unlike its founder, George Eastman, who twice adopted disruptive techno photographic technology, basically Kodak's management in the 80s and 90s were unwilling to consider digital as a replacement for film. Un they knew what was coming and they did nothing about it. They knew it, and so, so people know. So the appropriate response to disruptive technology problem is not of the, oh, it's a missed opportunity, or oh, it's a surprise, sort of like a, 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 like a plane that takes off without you. Here's the deal, I'm trying to put this into an aviation metaphor. The problem is situational awareness. The problem is not understanding the impact. When you look at what's going to happen with this experiential training, basically as if you had wandered on an airfield, which you thought was a metal, and the plane, flown by somebody else, ran over you during takeoff. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad, all right? That's bad, all right? And so disruptive technology, it's personal. This is personal for you. This is how you feed your kids, right? And my favorite technology impact story basically comes from, this is basically uh, the last words of Union Army General John B. Sedgwick, basically because he misunderstood the impact of, the, of new rifling technology. They couldn't hit an elephant at this disc, and he was dead, all right? Can I make it any simpler for you? All right, so, so, so what you have to do is figure out technology impacts. Figure out technology. What is this stuff going to do to you, your business, and your industry? Type of stuff. So, so, so I teach a class at Berkeley basically on science fiction. And a good science fiction story should be able to predict not just the automobile, we know the technology is coming, but the traffic jam, the impacts. So that's going on. And so my final question for you, basically my final question for you, all right, basically, is did painting die with the advent of mechanical image making or photography? Did painting end? What I did right there is, an, is a pedagogical device we call a question. I've seen most of these slides. I know how this ends. This is your part now. Did, no, it didn't. But it changed, didn't it? It changed. It changed. Oh, by the way, this is from this left and right. Do you know why they call this right and left? From Winslow Homer, it, was, it wasn't because right duck, left duck, right? Dead duck, no, no. No, it, it, it was because of the right barrel and the left barrel. Anyway, that's, that's enough for art history, art. All right, but anyway, but now, all right, I'm done. My work is done.